five and a half wins next season. Cleveland made a number of moves this offseason, including bringing in Tyrod Taylor and drafting Baker Mayfield. Hugh Jackson addressed his quarterback situation this weekend. Let's take a listen. I think any time you, you draft a quarterback at number one overall, everybody wants to see him play. But I've made a true commitment um, to um, you know our football team. Tyrod Taylor is going to be the starter. Uh, Baker's going to compete. Um, however that unfolds, it unfolds. But right now, Tyrod is the starter. Uh, if Baker can understand the National Football League and all the rigors that and the grinding that you have to go through, I'm not going to ever stop a player from being the best he can be. But I, we have a plan, and I want to work that plan as much as we can. Now, can a player supersede that? You never know. I, don't, I haven't had that happen. But right now, this, this team is going to be led by Tyrod Taylor. Hmm. Hmm. Skip, should Tyrod Taylor be the starter? Okay. I will preface this by saying you can accuse me of letting the Sooner take over <laughs> inside me because I did grow up a University of Oklahoma football fan. I've never been the biggest Baker Mayfield fan, but I know what he can do. And I'm here to tell you, if Hugh Jackson, after whatever they have, four preseason games in a camp, if he sees fit to throw Baker Mayfield into the game one fire and just let him go, I believe he will not shrink under the pressure of living up to being the number one overall pick. And I believe the Cleveland Browns would turn into the surprise team of the National Football League. I could see them going seven and nine. It's 5.5 is the over under on how many games. Are. That's a 70% increase. I don't know. Seven and nine. I definitely would see must-see TV because I'm going to watch every Browns game if Baker Mayfield starts from the start. I could see an offense that will rival, at least rival Atlanta's for the most exciting bombs away offense in football because I'm going to tell you what Baker Mayfield does best. He speed reads defenses as he did at Oklahoma, and he can find the open weapon and hit the open weapon with deadly accurate passes. He had quite a spectacular array of weapons at OU. I think he might have almost as spectacular array of weapons, if not better, for the Cleveland Browns. Can you imagine Baker Mayfield throwing to Josh Gordon mm -hmm. or Jarvis Landry or Corey Coleman? Don't forget him. He yeah. can fly now. Yeah. Or David Njoku. Remember, he's a stud tight end. Mm -hmm. Or that kid they took a flyer on, I think in the fourth round, that Antonio Callaway out of Florida, yeah. who might be the most talented receiver in the whole draft, but he is also the most troubled receiver. Yeah. If he stays eligible or upright, mm -hmm. you don't put him in the slot or put him in that mix, you don't think there'd be firepower? Or can you imagine Baker Mayfield flipping it or handing it to Nick Chubb mm -hmm. or Carlos, Carlos Hyde? or Duke Johnson, that's that's a pretty good array of running backs. Yeah. And they can all catch it and run with it, and all of a sudden, I know they lost their Hall of Fame left. I assume he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Uh, Joe Thomas left tackle, but they drafted that kid, Austin Corbett. I don't know if he steps in. I don't know how good they'll be. Their defense was decent last year in yards allowed. It was awful in points allowed. But Denzel Ward was the best corner in the draft. Yes, and I he could, was. I could suggest that he would have Marshawn Lattimore kind of impact on that defense if you throw him into the game one fire. Right. So I could see the offense inspiring the defense, and I could see an upset here or there, and I could see seven and nine if Baker Mayfield. Now, I have nothing but respect for Tyrod, but he's not the operator of a weapon-filled offense that Baker is. He doesn't have that kind of arm or that kind of moxie or, or sort of, as I always call him, a careful risk taker. Mm -hmm. Tyrod's going to make some plays with his feet, but he doesn't throw it as well as Baker does. So I, I'm just saying, if you let him go and you let this thing catch fire, I think it could be must-see TV. I agree with you to a certain extent. Let's just say for the sake of argument, they go through OTAs, they go through training camp, and the preseason is close. Well, Baker Mayfield should start. Well, you just invested the whole first well, pick because I don't, Skip, I, now, I don't believe, because we've seen it happen a lot of different ways. We see they throw Peyton Manning in, they, they throw Andrew Luck. There's certain guys they just throw, Matt Ryan, they just throw they him did. to the Wolves. Yeah. Other guys like Carson Palmer, you see they sit the entire year. If it's close, well, I don't really see, because but here's the thing, Skip, if you start Baker Mayfield first, because this is the way you have to look at it, the Cleveland Browns are not built like the Seattle Seahawks were built when Russell Wilson started day one. Mm -hmm. They're not built like that. Mm -mm. They're not built like when Ben Roethlisberger took over second game of the That's season true. like like they were. That, that was point. a veteran, veteran 
I agree. ball club. I agree. So this is not how they're built. No. Nope. But if it's close, you might as well, because this is what happened last year. They went to, the, I think, uh, the Texans went in. Well, Savage is going to be our guy. Savage is going to be our guy. And they really didn't even look or really was not even trying to give Deshaun a chance. Mm -mm. But halfway through at the half, here comes Deshaun. <laughs> well, if you start a guy out at the after the half, hell, you should have started him at the game. Because there's nothing that Tom Savage did in that game mm -mm. to change your mind and say, you know what, he can't get it done. Except get sacked. Right? Exactly. Yep. So if it's close, Skip, you go through OTAs, you go through training camp and the mini camp yep. and the preseason, I'm sure he's going to get an opportunity to show what he's capable of doing. And if it's close, you go ahead and ride with Baker Mayfield. But if you start Baker Mayfield, Skip, do you think those players say, you know what, we can win the division. How many rookie quarterbacks come in with that kind of cachet? Because more times than not, the veteran guy, while they might be happy to have a quarterback, they're trying to win right now. Because when the guy gets good, they might not be there. Very few rookies are good or you get to an ideal situation like Dak. You look at Dak started. Dak was not intended to start. That team was built. Tony Romo, they got Zeke, that offensive line. They were going to run the football and play. I don't know if Cleveland, that's not the way Cleveland is constructed. But if Baker Mayfield, if it's close, I say if it's this, Skip, if it's 55-45, Tyrod, might as well go ahead and ride with okay. Baker. Okay. Would you agree this is a spectacular array of weapons? That yeah, he has yeah. To they they, they, they got potential something. to be really good. They got the potential to be really good. Whew. Really good. I love Josh Gordon. If Josh Gordon, Josh Gordon, if he can keep his head on, he's a top five receiver. He's a top five receiver because with his side – Basically, he's not a fast Julio Jones, but he has that big body. He does. Great catch radius, can run after the catch. The question is, mm -hmm. and it seems to me after last year, he was on the straight and narrow. Hopefully, he stays on that path. But, Skip, he can be special. Well, we've seen him be special. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, Corey Coleman uh, uh, and, uh, and in tight end, and Joku. Yeah. So they got Jarvis Landry in the slot. So they got, they got weapons running back galore. I, seriously, close. that Antonio Callaway, every time I turned on the TV watching him last year, I'd say, wow, he can fly now. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he can run. He can make Ooh. plays in, in, in the return game. Ooh. But, Skip, you know. So, NFL it's going to come down to be what, testing. Yep. what does Hugh think of how the two quarterbacks are operating in the locker room with the veterans? Because Tyrod is highly respected and mm -hmm. right away will have nothing but respect and cachet with the veterans on the Browns. Not that the veterans have done anything to merit any big yeah. respect themselves. <laughs> but Baker Mayfield was different than Johnny Manziel. Baker at Oklahoma took the whole program over and was highly respected in the locker room as a worker and a leader. Right. Johnny was to his, unto himself. He was a solo act who the, the players liked him, but they didn't love the fact that he wasn't one of them. Baker's, well, they didn't treat him like they were one of them, but they treated him different. They did. Well. He was the star of stars. Right. It was the house that Johnny built. And, and the players see yeah. that you're treating, and I, and I get it, you know, you treat everybody, you don't treat everybody, you treat everyone fair, you don't treat them all the same. But when it's so blatant, when it's so obvious, all of a sudden, some, sometimes your teammates become, can become resentful because they see the things that Johnny is doing and they know it's not right and they become resentful because if that was them, you're like, they'd be called to the carpet. That is but correct. But you're in college and you're that kind of superstar, you get away with it. In the NFL, they don't play that. They don't well, play that. Yeah, also life is not fair. No. What do you say? Fair is for funnel cakes and ho-hos? Yeah, yeah, ho -hos. candied apples. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like if you, well, not that I feel like, if you get to take a top five quarterback when your team was bad last year, so if you have someone like Tyrod on your squad, you're probably wanting to start them because, I don't know, your record is one in 31. <laughs> So uh, there's no education like experience. It's not like he's sitting behind Favre or Montana or Brady right. or Bledsoe. So you give him set. I I, said, I can't jump that. I can't give him a seventy percent increase. Mm. I might be willing to give him like thirty forty. Mm. Well, I mean, would you go above five? <laughs> no, I give five on the head. Five on the head. So you would bet the under on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. Five would be a drastic improvement. Skip down the 50% increase. <laughs> right. Can LeBron carry the Cavs to another series win? We'll discuss that next.